Good evening. I think. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this evening's reading of One Thousand and One Nights Live on Live and Online. I am your host, Joanna Godwin Seidel, and before we start this evening. I am going to have the absolute joy and pleasure of reading you a Middle Eastern, a Middle Eastern poem by a poet, and I hope I get the name right, called Khalil Gibran. And I do apologize if I pronounced his name wrong, um, but there were a lot of messages on social media today with people talking about being fed up and fearful of the pandemic and so on and so forth. So I thought I would read a very beautiful poem which a friend sent to me, Elton Fortune, sent to me today, um, all the way from Norway, I think he's in, and um, it's called Fear. It is said that before entering the sea, a river trembles with fear. She looks back at the path she has traveled from the peaks of the mountains, the long winding road crossing forests and villages. And in front of her, she sees an ocean so vast that to enter, there seems nothing more than to disappear forever. But there is no other way. The river cannot go back. Nobody can go back. To go back is impossible in existence. The river needs to take the risk of entering the ocean because only then will fear disappear because that's where the river will know. It's not about disappearing into the ocean, but of becoming the ocean. So there you go. I just thought that was a really beautiful poem to read in these current rather strange times. Um, before we start this night's reading, which I am about to do. So if you are all sitting very comfortably, um, then I shall begin. Now we are on the 405th night. And if you remember very well, um, it is the story of Ab al-Rahman and the Maghribi story of the Rook. And there was a man from West Africa and he traveled the world and he found the wing feather of feather of a young rook, Kaiseran. And this is how he came about this quill. And his name is Abd al-Rahman. And he came about it by sailing the China Seas. Now, when it was the 405th night, Shahrazad said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that Ab al-Rahman 
the Mormon, the Chinaman, was wont to tell wondrous tales, amongst which was the following. He was on a voyage in the China seas with a company of merchants, when they sighted an island from afar. So they steered for it, and making fast thereto, saw that it was large and spacious. The ship's crew went ashore to get wood and water, taking with them hatchets and ropes and water skins, the travellers accompanying them. And presently espied a great dome, white and gleaming, excuse me, white and gleaming, an hundred cubits long. So they made towards it and drawing near, found that it was an egg of the rook and fell on it with axes and stones and sticks till they uncovered the young bird and found the chick as it were a firm set hill. So they plucked out one of the wing feathers, but could not do so save by helping one another, for all the quills were not full grown. After which they took what they could carry of the young bird's flesh and cut the quill away from the vein, returned to the ship. Then they set sail and putting out to sea, voyaged with a fair wind all that night till the sun rose and while everything went well, they saw the rock come flying after them as he were a vast cloud with a rock in his talons like a great heap bigger than the ship. As soon as he poised himself in air over the vessel, he let fall the rock upon it. But the craft, having great way on her, out went the rock which fell into the sea with a loud crash and a horrible. So Allah decreed their deliverance and saved them from doom and they cooked the young bird's flesh and ate it. Now there were amongst them old white bearded men and when they awoke on the morning they found that their beards had turned black nor did any who had eaten of the young rook grow grey ever after. Some said the cause of the return of the youth to them and the ceasing of hoariness from them was that they had heated the pot with arrow wood, whilst others would have it that it came of eating the rook chick's flesh. And this is indeed a wonder of wonders. And before I tell you the next story, I've realised I didn't plug my phone in and I have to do that otherwise we will have no battery and I will lose you. So let me quickly do what I should have done while I was preparing and completely forgot about. And hope that this, excuse me everybody. should work now. I do apologise everybody. That's what a live reading is for you. So, and a story is related of Adi bin Zayed and the Princess Hind. Al Nu'man bin Al Manzir, king of the Arabs of Iraq, had a daughter named Hind, who went out one pash which is a feast day of the Nazarenes, to the white church, to take the sacrament. She was 11 years old and was the loveliest woman of her age and time. Let's make her 17, shall we? And it so chanced that on the same day came to Hira a young man called Adi bin Said, with presents from the Chazroe, to al Numan, and he also went to the white church to communicate. He was tall of stature and fair of favour, with handsome eyes, 
and smooth cheeks and had with him a company of his people. Now, there was with Hind, Bint al Numan, a slave girl named Maria, who was enamoured of Adi, but had not been able to foregather with him. So, when she saw him in the church, she said to Hind, Look at yonder youth. By Allah, he is handsomer than all thou seest. Hind answered, Well, and who is he? And Maria answered, Adi bin Zaid. Quoth al Nuaman's daughter, I fear lest he know me, if I draw nearer to look on him. Quoth Maria, How should he know thee? when he hath never seen thee. So she drew near him and found him jesting with the youths, his companions. And indeed, he surpassed them all, not only in his personal charms, but in the excellence of his speech, the eloquence of his tongue and the richness of his raiment. When the princess saw him, she was ravished with him. Her reason was confounded and her colour changed. And Maria, seeing her inclination to him and to her, speak him. So she spoke to him and went away. Now, when he looked upon her and heard her speech, he was captivated by her and his wit was dazed. His heart fluttered and his colour changed, so that his companions suspected him, and he whispered one of them to follow her and find out who she was. The young man went after her, and returning informed him that she was Princess Hind, daughter of al Numan. So Adi left the church, not knowing whither he went, for excess of love and reciting these two couplets. O oh, friends of me, one favour more I pray, unto the convents find once more your way. Turn me that I so face the land of Hind, then go and fairest greeting for me say. Then, he went to his lodging and lay that night, restless, without appetite for the food of sleep. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted say. Now, when it was the four hundred and sixth night, she said, it has reached me O oh, auspicious king, that when Adi ended his verses, he went to his lodgings and lay that night restless and without appetite for the food of sleep. Now on the morrow, Maria accosted him, and he received her kindly, though before he would not incline to her and said to her, What is thy will? Quoth she, I have a want of thee. And quoth he, Name it, for by Allah thou shalt not ask me aught, but I will give it thee. So she told him that she loved him. And her want of him was that he would grant her a lover's privacy. And he agreed to do her will, on condition that she would serve him with Hind and devise some device to bring them together. Then he took her into the vintner's tavern in one of the by streets of Hira and lay with her, after which she returned to Hind and asked her, Dost thou not long to see Adi? 
She answered, How can this be? Indeed, my longing for him makes me restless, and no repose has left me since yesterday, quoth Maria. I will appoint him to be in such a place where thou canst look on him from the palace. Quoth Hind, do what thou wilt, and agreed with her upon the place. So Adi came, and the princess looked out upon him, and when she saw him, she was like to topple down from the palace top and said, Oh, Maria, except thou bring him in to me this night, I shall die. So saying, she fell to the ground in a fainting fit, and her serving women lifted her up and bore her into the palace, whilst Maria hastened to al Numan and discovered the whole matter to him with perfect truth, telling him that indeed she was mad for the love of Adi, and except he marry her to him, she must be put to shame and die for our love of him, which would disgrace her father among the Arabs. Adding at the end, there is no cure for this but wedlock. The king bowed his head a while in thought and exclaimed again and again. Verily, we are Allah's and unto him we are returning. Then said he, Woe to thee! How shall the marriage be brought about, seeing I mislike to open the matter? And she said, he is yet more ardently in love and yet more desireful of her than she is of him. I will so order the affair that he shall be unaware of his case being known to thee, but do not betray thyself, O king. Then she went to Adi and after acquainting with everything said, Make a feast and bid the king thereto. And when the wine hath gotten the better of him, ask of him his daughter, for he will not refuse thee. Quoth Adi, I fear lest this enrage him against me and be the cause of enmity between us. But quoth she, I came not to thee, till I had settled the whole affair with him. Then she returned to Al-Nurman and said to him, Seek of Adi that he entertain thee in his house. Replied the king, Well, there is no harm in that. And after three days, besought Adi to give him and his lords the morning meal in his house. He consented, and the king went to him. And when the wine had taken effect on al Numan, Adi rose and sought of him his daughter in wedlock. He consented and married them and brought her to him after three days. And they abode at al Numan's court in all solace of life and its delight. And Jaharazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying, how permitted, say. I'm gonna read one more night to you. I'm just gonna have some tea first. Before it gets too cold. Now, 
when it was the four hundred and seventh night. She said, It has reached me, O auspicious king, that Adi abode with Hin bint al Nurman bin Munzia three years in all solace of life and its delight. After which, after which time, the king was wroth with Adi and slew him. Well, Hin mourned for him with grievous mourning and built her an hermitage outside the city where she retired and became a religious, weeping and bewailing her husband till she died. And her hermitage is seen to this day in the suburbs of Hira. <laughs> they also tell a tale of Dibil al Kuzai with the lady and Muslim bin al Walid. Quoth Dibil al Kuzai. I was sitting one day at the gate of al Kak when a damsel came past. Never saw I a fairer face or better formed than she, walking with a voluptuous gait and ravishing all beholders of her lithe and undulating pace. Now, as my eyes fell on her, I was captivated by her, and my vittles trembled, and me seemed my heart flew forth of my breast. So I stood before her, and I accosted her with this verse. The tears of these eyes find easy release, but sleep flies these eyelids without surcease. Whereupon, she turned her face and looking at me straight away, made answer with this distich. A trifle this, and his eyes be sore, when her eyes say yes to his love caprice. I was astounded at the readiness of her reply and the fluency of her speech and rejoined with this verse. Say, doth heart of my fair incline to him whose tears like a swelling stream increase? And she answered me without hesitation thus. If thou crave our love, know that love's alone and a debt to be paid by us twain, a peace. Never entered my ears aught sweeter than her speech, nor ever saw I brighter than her face. So I changed rhyme and rhythm to try her in my wonder at her words and repeated this couplet. Will fate with joy of union ever bless our sight and one desire for one with other one unite? She smiled at this. Never saw I a fairer than her mouth nor sweeter than her lips and answered me without stay or delay in the following distich. Pray, tell me, what hath fate to do betwixt us twain? Thought fate so bless our eyne with union and delight. At this, I sprang up and fell to kissing her hands and cried, I had not thought that fortune would vouchsafe me, vouchsafe me with such occasion. Do thou follow me not of bidding or against thy will, but, but of the grace of thee and thy favour to me. 
Then I went on, and she after me. Now at that time I had no lodging I deemed fit for the like of her. But Muslim bin al-Walid was my fast friend, and he had a handsome house. So I made for his abode and knocked at the door, whereupon he came out and I saluted him, saying, "'Tis for time like this that friends are treasured up. And he replied, with love and gladness, come in, you twain. So we entered, but found money scarce with him. However, he gave me a kerchief, saying, carry it to the bazaar and sell it and buy food on what else thou needest. I took the kerchief and hastening to the market, sold it and bought what we required of victuals and other matters. But, well, when I returned, I found that Muslim had retired with her to an underground chamber. When he heard my step, he hurried out and said to me, Allah requite thee the kindness thou hast done me, O Abu Ali, and reward thee in time to come and reckon it of thy good deeds on the day of doom. So saying, he took from thee the food and wine and shut the door in my face. His words enraged me. And I knew not what to do, but he stood behind the door, shaking for mirth. And when he saw me thus, he said to me, I conjure thee on thy life, O oh, Abu Ali, tell me who it was composed this couplet. I lay in her arms all night, leaving him to sleep, foul hearted, but clean of staff. This, my rage redoubled, and I replied, He who wrote this other couplet, one, I wish him in belt a thousand horns, exceeding in mighty height, Manaf. Then I began to abuse him and reproach him with the foulness of his actions and his lack of honour, and he was silent, never uttering a word. But when I had finished, he smiled and said, <laughs> Out on thee, O fool! Thou hast entered my house and sold my kerchief and spent my silver, so with whom art thou wroth, O pimp? Then he left me and went away to her, whilst I said, <laughs> by Allah, thou art right to twit me as a nincompoop and panda. Then I left his door and went away in sore concern. Oh, and I feel its trace in my heart to this very day. For I never had my will of her, nor indeed ever heard of her more. And amongst other tales is that about Isaac of Mosul and the merchant. Quote Ishak bin Ibrahim al Masuli, it so chanced that one day, feeling weary of being on duty at the palace and in attendance upon the caliph, I mounted a horse and went forth at break of dawn. 
having a mind to ride out in the open country and take my pleasure. So I said to my servants, if they come a messenger from the Caliph or another, say that I set out at daybreak upon a pressing business and that ye know not whither I am gone. Then I fared forth alone and went round about to the city till the sun waxed hot when I halted in a great thoroughfare known as Al Haram. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of day and ceased saying her permitted say. I think it's a good time for things to come to a close this evening. Dear friends, I am going to wish you all with some gorgeous music. I'm gonna wish you all a very, very good evening. I hope you, hi Tim. Hi, it's lovely having you here. Hi Renshin. By the way, everybody, I do apologize if I pronounced a lot of the names wrong. I ad admit to being a little bit lazy and not having checked up how to pronounce those names again. So I do apologize, but I hope I didn't do it too bad a job. Um, what a great story tonight. I love tonight's stories. I feel really sorry for that little baby bird though. I mean, that was a bit brutal. Um, but now we all know what we need to do to have permanent youth. We just need to go and find the quill of a baby rook. Cook it up, and the rook, baby rook itself. Cook it up, eat it, keep the quill, and we'll be young forever. That's the, that supposedly, according to that story, is the magic trick to staying youthful forever. But who wants to? I hope you enjoyed the poem that I read beforehand. I am going to post that poem on the 1001 Nights group page so make sure you check that out it is part of the vienna theater project page we have a 1001 nights group page i will post it there because it's such a beautiful poem and um some music from kamia possibly again as well um we will not have another reading this week i will be back with you unless i suddenly decide out of the blue to read one so do watch out just in case i get bored as we're still stuck at home we can't go out anywhere because we are still in a hard lockdown here in Vienna in Austria. So, um, but do watch out just in case I do decide to throw one in because I get bored stuck at home every evening and there's only so much telly that you can watch. Although I do have quite a lot of work to do. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed tonight's reading. I hope you enjoyed the poem. It was an absolute pleasure as usual reading for you. I'm gonna finish off my tea. I'm going to listen to Kamiya playing some music. I wish you many, many blessings. If we don't see each other this, the rest of this weekend, have a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Have a great Friday tomorrow. Take care of yourself. And worst comes to the worst, we'll see each other at the very latest next Tuesday, where we're going to find out what is happening with uh, our young gentleman who's gone AWOL for the day and run off from the Caliph and absconded from his duties and he's gonna have some fun. I can tell you that much for sure. And of course, there's going to be a beautiful woman involved as well. So good night, everybody. Take care, look after yourselves. Bye-bye. <laughs>